Okay, I'm going to do a little demonstration on how I make my glass buttons. I'm going to create a new file, um, 640 by 480, and I'm going to make the background well white for now. We'll change that though. Um, I, I like to, st to have a gray background. This makes it easier to see what I'm doing with the effects. So I'm going to go up to Edit, Fill, select 50% gray. Okay. Now I'm going to go over to the Layers menu. Go down to the bottom, select New Layer. This is where I'll create the button, basically. I need to change, first off, change the uh, foreground and background colors. I generally use the darker colors than you realize you're going to need for this because after you add a highlight, it changes some things. For the foreground color, I'm going to select um, a value of 117. Zero, zero, which gives me a dark red. And for the background, I'm going to select a value of 255, zero, zero. Select OK. Um, the next thing I'll do is select a shape off the, uh, the rectangular, rounded rectangular tool over here. And this, if you don't see it right away, it could be underneath. Um, underneath the button. You'll have to select the rounded rectangular. I make sure that you have filled pixels selected up here and I use a radius of 20 for this particular demonstration. Um, at this point it's just a matter of dragging out your, your button on the screen here. It will automatically fill it with your foreground color which is a dark color which doesn't really matter right at the moment. We're going to put a gradient in this. Um, at this point if we hold down the command key on the Mac, or I think, believe it's a control key on the PC, and then, then click on the actual icon on the, of, for the layer one, it will, it will create a, a selection based on exactly what the shape of that is. Um, at this point, we'll I'll just go up to the gradient tool, go up to the top, hit the drop down box, make sure we have foreground to background. Come back over to our uh, selection, Hold down the shift key, drag down, and it will create a nice gradient in there to get us going here. Um, then I will go down to the Layers palette, select New Layer. Uh, I'm going to double click the name and give it the name Highlight. It's not necessary, but it just makes it easier when you have a lot of layers to identify what's what. Now I don't like my uh, highlight to be the same width and dimensions as the, uh, as the outside of the button, so I'll go up to Select modify, contract, I'm going to contract it by two pixels. Um, back to the foreground and background colors, click on the default icon and then select the switch foreground and background. We'll go back to the gradient tool, go up to the drop down box. We want to select foreground to transparent. Select that. Come back, start off a little bit above the, the actual selection. Hold down the shift key, drag down to about the middle, and it, it creates a, a, a gradated uh, uh, shade there. I like to have a, a, a fairly hard edge around the center of the button. So at this point, just hold down the, the shift key and use the down arrow and move that down a ways. You can move it back, fine tune it by taking your finger off the shift key and just move it up and down. Once you get it where you like it, just hit the delete key. At this point we could drop the selection. We have already the beginnings of a really nice looking button here. Um, at this point um, I'm going to add some text. Let's click on the text button. You would normally go in and set all your values at the top. I'm just going to use whatever's defaulted here. Um, click in the center here. Type in my text. Um, click on the text layer again. That will actually deselect the text. And as you can see here, we have uh, some nice looking text, but I'd like to add a drop shadow to that. So to do that, I'm going to go back over to this text layer, come over here to the right, use the right click, go down to blending options, and here we see drop shadow. I'll click here. I'm going to change this value here, the angle, to, uh, to 90. And I'm going to change the size. And what this will do is change the... Uh, change this the shadow from a hard shadow to a soft shadow and you just play around with these sl um, sliders a little bit 
and you might change these depending on how big of the button or how small you're working with. It does tend to make a difference. Um, that looks pretty good where it is, so I'm going to select OK. Um, looks pretty good right now, although with the white text, it doesn't look bad on top of the on top of the this highlight. But if there's a different color, like black or something, it's best to put it underneath the highlight. So to do that, we just click on the uh, left click on the text and drag it down below the highlight till you see that bar between the two layers light up, and then just drop it there. Now your text is been is in the middle. Um, it all looks pretty good right at this point, but one other thing I like to do is add a, um, uh, an emboss effect around the, uh, the button. I like to do an outside bevel. So to get to that, I'm going to select my main layer with the red, the red gradient on it. Move over to the right here, right click, select blending options, go up to, go to bevel and emboss. Come up here, we, we don't want an inner bevel, we want an outer bevel. Um, we want this to be in the down. The values that I have in here already with a 5 for the size and 0 for soften look pretty good on these on this button so I'm just going to leave it right there by selecting OK and that is pretty much it. If you wanted to change your text a little bit you could uh, select your text layer and then hit Command T or Control T on the on the PC and then it's just a matter of dragging out these boxes the, uh, the text will stretch and stay nice and sharp because it's still a vector at this point. We haven't uh, rasterized it. Double click it when you're happy with it. And that's pretty much it. It looks pretty good. Um, if, if, you, if you're doing a lot of buttons, I like to convert these layers all together into one thing called a smart object, which allows me to, to duplicate it all over the screen and, and go in and change different... Uh, I could change the colors, just by adding a, a hue and saturation layer. In fact, I'll let me show one more item here. Um, usually, with a button, you have an on and an off value. So, if you select a layer here, I'm going to go down to hue and select, or down to the effects menu, select hue and saturation. At this point, I just select select OK because I want to come between these two layers. I want to link the hue and saturation to the actual uh, um, gradient. So to do that on the Mac, it's uh, I believe it's the Option key on the PC. It's either the Alt key or the it's probably the Alt key, and that will tie your uh, hue and saturation chain effect right to the the layer that you want it to affect, and not all the other layers. Now we'll go in and just double click this effect, um, select the lightness slider, and drag it way down, and you can see that that changes my background to a darker shade of, of red. I'll select OK. Now just by selecting this thing off and on you can see the difference and um, that's pretty much it. That's the end of this tutorial.